We welcome you in to another episode of Inside Boxing Live presented by PPV.com. I am Dan Canobio, joined as always by the former 140-pound champion, Mr. Chris Algieri. Together we form the best single podcast of two men doing it from New York and Florida. That's, I mean, that's actually true. I, I, th- I think we have a lot more accolades than that, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, that is very accurate. That is accurate, and we do have a lot more accolades. And I'm going to ask you once again, everybody, go out and give us a five-star rating. I don't ask often, but when I do, people do it. Give us a five-star rating on iTunes. Go ahead and subscribe to Inside Boxing Live. We just had one of our most successful episodes, 30,000 views on our Ooh. Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fundora post-fight show. Love nice. that. Didn't touch our most viewed video on YouTube, which was after Niowa Inoue beat Stephen Fulton, which had 77,000. Wow, um, which is crazy because that was just like a perfect storm. But I think the uh, the Aussies were upset. Blood sells, and then the people just love to see our faces talking boxing every single week. So go ahead, show us some love. We've been feeling the love lately at, with this new move to ppv.com. Uh, they are awesome. Go and follow ppv.com on all socials. It's the best way to watch a pay per view. It's the best way to order a pay per view. You can uh, hang out with us in the live chat. Jim Lampley. Uh, Lance Pugmar, no subscriptions. We'll never ask you for a subscription. Just sign up, clear stream, enjoy the fights, interact with the community. Our next show, our next pay-per-view is Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia on April 20th. We'll be in the chat there. Stream it to your phone. Stream it to your TV. Stream it to your your tablet. Stream it everywhere. PPV.com, thank you so much for being our presenting sponsor. All right, Chris, let's get into it. I want to spend this show talking about what I believe is the best division in boxing. It's the 140-pound division. A lot of the sport is running through this division. A lot of the storylines currently today are running through 140 pounds. It's because they have some of the biggest names. It's also because we just added a new champion to the weight class in Pitbull Cruz, which makes some intriguing matchups. Let's go through the champions, Chris. Devin Haney, WBC champion. Tiafimo Lopez, WBO champion. Subrio Matias, IBF champion. And as I just mentioned, our guy Isak Cruz is the new WBA champion supplanting Roly Romero. Man, is that a fearsome foursome at 140 pounds. We're going to break it all down. Damn. That's a spicy, spicy weight class right now. It's a spicy me bowl, as they say. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, 135 was the hottest division, the best division, the deepest division. But 140's always been that kind of leapfrog division where the 35-pounders bleed into 140 eventually and then eventually go back up to 147 because that's always been you know, historically a money division. But now 140 is a, a pretty hot money, money, money type, type division. So... Um, it's, it's interesting because we, we have some, some super talents there. We got guys who are going to be around for a long time because they're young. We got a, it's a very young, hot division, which is really cool. Um, and Cruz, a guy that I was having trouble visualizing him as a 140 pound world champion is his first fight at 140. I thought he was kind of small for 35. Um, and now after watching him at 140, after hit, watching him completely dismantle and abuse Roley Romero, I'm like, you know what? Actually, it's a good addition. We have another fun fighter in the mix, another guy that I can see tangling with every one of the other guys um, in a meaningful way as well. So uh, I tip my hat to, to Team Cruz. They did they did what they needed to do. They did what I expected them to do. I did I did actually predict that he was gonna gonna beat Roley. Um, so yeah, man, welcome to division, a hot hot division. Let's go make some money, man. <laughs> welcome to Chris Algieri's former division. Chris Algieri, yeah. former 140 pound chip. I know never you didn't lost like that rolling. title. Never lost that WBO title. Undefeated at never, 140. Just like uh, Dickie Echo. Never, n- never knocked me down, Ray. Knock me never down, knocked Ray. me down. Never knocked me down. You never lost at 140. Uh, nope. I know Roly. Uh, you know he was the, the the guy that didn't belong in, in that list. To be honest, he he yeah. fit it from a different standpoint of being a possibly the most undeserve, undeserving <laughs> world champion I, in recent memory. Honestly, I mean, uh, definitely I in the sport. Yeah, definitely in this current uh, sport. But he's out. Um, he released a really long message and and thanked everyone and 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 all that. But I don't think we'll see him in in this conversation for uh, a really long time, if if ever. So Cruz joins the the list, and it makes uh it 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 rounds out a really nice set of champions. Will they ever fight? I know that's what fans want to question, and that's what fans were questioning when I put up this graphic 
on our social media. Uh, the skeptical fans, I don't blame them. Uh, boxing fans have been mistreated for, for years and years. Will these guys all fight? Uh, who's the best? Who's the hardest to beat? And that's what we'll do right now. So let's go ahead and, and rank them. Um, go ahead and rank them one to four. Obviously, you got some big names like Haney, Tiafimo, and Matias and Cruz are, are the new ones. Yeah, I mean, prior prior to the pro great win from Haney, I had Tiafimo as, as the top guy. I think Haney has slid in as number one uh, on my ranking. I got Haney number one. I got Tiafimo number two. I got uh, Subriel Matias at number three. And now I got the, the newcomer, Isa Cruz, at number four. Uh, very, very hot division. Uh, great champions. A lot of good fights that can be made between these guys. Um, but it's really tight, man. One and two for me is really, really tight. I, I think everyone on this show knows, all of our listeners know, that I'm very, very high on Tifuma Lopez. I think that his boxing IQ, his physical gifts and talents are, are through the roof. Um, but he's inconsistent. And that's something that Haney masters. He is, he is incredibly consistent, incredibly disciplined. And we talk about that on the show a lot, too. Um, and then running off their past performances, I got to have Haney ahead. You know, Haney with the, with the dominant win over Progray, who used right. to be the, the boogeyman, the rougarou of the division. Um, and then uh, Tiafimo struggling to cut off the ring against a very, very good, a very, very talented uh, Jermaine Ortiz. Uh, but based on their past performances, I got Haney edging T.O. at number one. You got to have Haney one. This is a what have you done for me lately type of sport. Yep. No, um, always, always. If this was six months ago, I'd probably have Tiafimo number one coming off of that Taylor win. And he had not yet seen the type of clunker performance that he would go on to have against Jermaine Ortiz. We'll have more stuff on Tiafimo uh, later on in this episode because he has a new opponent, an interesting <laughs> opponent. But yeah, I would agree. Haney number one right now off of that uh, Pro Gray win, F off of that Lomachenko win. If you don't really agree that Haney beat Lomachenko, you got to admit that he gave him one hell of a fight and he stood and he traded and he did a lot of things to quiet some of his naysayers. Haney's definitely the guy right now. Tiafimo at the top. I agree with that. 3-4 is interesting to me. That's where it gets a little dicey. Like I have been fending off a lot of these Matias supporters out there and a lot of these Matias uh, bandwagoners. Uh, I think he's great. I think Matias is unbelievable and he's he has un outstanding punching power and he has marketed himself as the boogeyman. And now he has Eddie Hearn behind him as his mouthpiece to keep this narrative going that no one wants to fight him and he's indestructible, but he's not indestructible. He's lost before he gets hit. I don't think his style is sustainable, but I still think he should be three. And then Cruz at four, who's just a wrecking ball, a short, compact wrecking ball that would make a lot of fun fights in the division. Would you go ahead and say that at 140 pounds, that Devin Haney is the hardest to beat? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think Haney would be the most difficult guy to beat based on his style. And I've said this before about Haney in the past. Um, listen, as a fighter, looking at him and what he brings to the table in terms of um, his physicality, he's very tall, he's very long for the weight class. He's big for the weight class, too. He cuts a lot of weight. He's a big guy. I've been around Devin for, for years. He's he's not a small 40-pounder. Um, coming from one of the biggest 40-pounders who's done it in recent years, he's, he, Haney is very tall, very, very long. And he's, man, he's disciplined. We say that all the time. Not only disciplined outside of the ring in terms of getting prepared, so he's obviously in great shape, but he's very disciplined from rounds one through 12. That's a very difficult thing to do. A championship fight, 12 rounds, is a very long time. For him to stay locked in the way that he does makes him extremely difficult to beat. I talked about Tiafimo and how the fact that he can be inconsistent. Well, Devin Haney is very consistent. And when he chooses to get his game plan, he sticks to it. Uh, he goes through it. They make adjustments in the corner here and there. But honestly, they do everything in the gym. They're ready to, to, to execute. Uh, the preparation is there. The mindset is there. The kid is locked in. He's like a cyborg. He goes out there and he does. He, he gets the mission done. Yeah. Uh, that kind of guy is going to be very hard to beat. I don't care who you are. Yeah, uh, I mean, you, you got you got to give Haney his props, man. I mean, the guy's got one hell of a jab and one and great defense. And to me, those are the most two sustainable attributes you could have as a fighter for longevity. And, and you mix in the control. Yeah? His distance control right. is out of this world. Right, and you mix in the fact that he he's shown that he will stand and trade more. He's shown that he'll commit to the body. He'll stand in the pocket. He'll go down to the body, leave himself open a little bit, get tagged a few times, and, and circle out with something that Shakur Stevenson hasn't yet been able to master. Uh, and something that Haney, uh, give the man his credit, give the man his flowers, uh, is maturing in front of our eyes as a complete fighter. We'll see on April 20th if you can add that power and stop Ryan Garcia, who coincidentally is also in this weight class, and he would fall into the other guys because uh, it's a long, long list. But I want to keep going with this these champions and, and one of the, the, the deepest 
weight classes, what do you think is the best matchup? Because you have a guy in Haney who is a kind of a counter puncher. Uh, same thing with Tiafimo. I think the more we learn about Tiafimo is that we're learning that in order for him to be in exciting fights, he has to be in there with a guy that's going to come forward, a guy that's going to uh, show off uh, Tiafimo's athleticism. I think Matias and Cruz are those guys. Like they're the, they're the come forward types that could offset Haney and Tiafimo. What's the best matchup of these four champions at 140? This 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 might come as a surprise to a lot of people, or, or not? Maybe not. I mean, I got I got Matias Cruz as as Ooh. the most exciting matchup. I think that's a can't miss. You got two guys. First of all, two guys who are willing to fight anybody. I don't I don't think either one of them is going to be like no 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 we we're going to wait for something better. No, Matias is ready to fight everybody. He's, he's ready. He's also, I think he's the oldest of the bunch. So he's really trying to, and he hasn't made that money yet. So he's definitely willing to fight whoever. Um, and I think with their team, they would look at Cruz and be like, oh, I can unify now. This is a guy that I can beat. He's coming up. I'm definitely bigger than him. Matias is big for the weight class as well. Cuts a lot of weight. Um, and, but Cruz, man, stylistically, difficult guy to deal with. Stays really low. Reminds me of, of you know, they're calling him the Mexican Mike Tyson. <laughs> but I spoke to Teddy Atlas the other day, and he brought up an even better guy, Joe Frazier. He's a Mexican Joe Frazier. The way that he gets underneath punches, stays really low, keeps his chin tucked, rips those hooks on both hands. Guy never throws a jab. Go go, go find Joe Frazier throwing a jab. Even his jab was a power punch. He threw it like boom, but he's looking for that left hook. So I think that's actually a, a, more, a better a better um, uh, analogy. Uh, and excuse me, analogy there for for fighters in terms of what, how, yeah. what he brings up. Uh, brings to the table. So I think that fight is is fireworks from the opening bell for as long as it lasts. Uh, that's the one. I think a lot of people, oh, what a hanging to a female. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, what you're, to your point, Dan, Tia Fimo needs guys like Matias and Cruz. Yep. Those guys make him look brilliant. Yep. Uh, that style, that Tia Fimo, when he's counterpunching and using that athleticism, that ability to pull the trigger, take mm-hmm. those quick steps, change direction, change of directions, and let those hands go when a guy's coming at him. I don't think those guys actually match up well with Tiafimo. I think Haney matches up really well with Tiafimo because of that. But for me, yeah, the most exciting, best matchup in this weight division right now, Subrio Matias and Cruz, man. Dude, Mexico versus uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Add that into it. Too. Yep. That's, that's a bona fide can't miss type of fight. Unfortunately, uh, for us fans, I don't know if we get it because of the political divide in boxing. Uh, Super Matias just signed God, in her and match. God, room. It's horrible, bro. It's just like the it's always hanging over us as as fight fans. Uh, Matias signs with Matchroom. Great for him. Get that money, you know. Yep. Get that marketability up. But that means like, okay, Eddie Hearn and PBC ain't ain't working together. So I I don't think we see that as bad as I want to see it. And one more, more thing, going back to how boxing is such a what have you done for me lately sport. Six months ago, we're talking about Pitbull Cruz giving a absolute dud against Giovanni Caparra. We were there, Dan. We, you and I were, we're there. We were like, oh, my God, this is a bad fight. Oh, my God, this guy's stock is 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 plummeting. Now he's Joe Frazier. I love this sport. <laughs> Come on, man. It's a sport that can knock you down, but also it can lift you up to yeah. unbelievable heights. And Pitbull Cruz's stock couldn't be any higher. He's over a million followers on Instagram. He is a legit star. He's 25 years old. People awesome. forget it. He's 25 years old. You know, he doesn't speak English, so you kind of lose out on some of his interviews. But when he does his, these interviews and they translate them, you know, he's got a lot of experience. This is a guy who went 12 with Gervonta. He's now fought Roley. He has uh, some other good wins in there, too. And the sky's the limit for him. And I think a fight with Matias would, would be awesome. Obviously, the most blockbuster of the fights, the fights that make the most sense is Tiafimo and Haney. You know, they have a history. Uh, they're part of that, quote unquote, four kings that I think is obviously retired that moniker um that right there would be well, i think we're using four horsemen for them right is that is that is that the term i don't know i, I think everyone's just kind of given up on any hope that they're all going to fight and like they're no longer kids anymore they're you know t was 26 haney's 25 like they're not kids anymore most of them haven't fought each other well, they're, they're kids of... us old man dan we're uh, uh we're, we're... Yeah, no no these guys are like pro gray he's like around our age and he he uh, put up a, a a dud there too, so he wasn't holding yeah. it down for the old people there. But To and Haney would be the, the the blockbuster type of fight, the one that you you market, the one that it becomes a pay per view, the one that you can really get behind. But I agree, uh, it's not the best fight because of their styles. It could, can be a complete dud. It could be uh, kind of a chess match, which doesn't really help the wider scope of the sport. Doesn't really go to the casual fan out there. People know Tiafimo, people know Haney. 
but that fight could be like, oh, you know, some buyer's remorse for some for some non uh, boxing hardcores. I also think Cruz versus any of those of those four guys, uh, other three would be awesome fights because of his style too of coming forward. Uh, versus Haney would be awesome. Versus Tiafima would be awesome. Just to go back to like the the political and, and divide there. You know, I was talking to Haney at the top ranked gym uh, when he had his his media workout last week, and he's welcoming all these fights. Like he said, you know what? I kind of wanted to move up to 147, but now I don't. Now I want to become undisputed at 140. And, you know, Matias, I'll fight him. Like, he's with Eddie Hearn. You know, I have a great relationship with Eddie Hearn. He's the boogeyman, but he really isn't the boogeyman. So Haney's talking that talk. Like, Haney has a chance to become undisputed at 135 and 140. And if you want to go political stuff, like, Matias Haney is a makeable fight now with uh, Matchroom and Eddie Hearn in the mix. Now, I want to get your thoughts on Matias because – you kind of opened my eyes to this. You opened my eyes to Matias being beatable. You opened my eyes to Matias not exactly being that boogeyman. What is it about him that gave you that impression early on? Because I've been going with this notion on, on Twitter, and people are like, what are you, crazy, man? This guy's the best of them all. He's number one, Matias. Uh, will those people Puerto Rican? Because they are <laughs> they are very devout. I don't know. Probably. They're very devout. Um, yeah, no, Subri Matias, listen, he's a monster. He is a, a come-forward, two-fisted puncher. Um, he's He hits hard with both hands. He's got a great engine. He throws combinations. He, he's, he's a fun guy to watch. Comes forward, puts a ton of pressure on you. Listen, if you have any doubt in your mind, he's going to break you. He's that kind of guy, which is why he's such a great matchup for all these guys, because he's going to test everybody. But... Guys, this is boxing, and I'm talking X's and O's. Homeboy gets hit too much. Mm. He gets hit, and he gets hurt. He's not a guy who walks through everything and is like, oh, I'm to Terminator, I can't get hurt, like how Spence was back in the day. Yeah, Spence got hit, but listen, he he didn't buckle on anything. Matias buckles. Matias goes down. Ma- Matias gets hurt. Yes, he roars back. But listen, there's an end to that, guys. This thing, it's got a shelf life. Can't be getting hit all the time. You cannot be getting hit at the top level. That's the thing. What are what are his biggest best wins? We have not seen him in with the upper upper crust elite. The mm-hmm. upper crust elite, you only get one mistake, and the fight's over. You got a guy like Tifima Lopez, you can't make mistakes with that guy. Hits too hard, pulls that trigger too fast, puts you away. So, yeah, I know these guys are really, really pushing hard for Matias. Listen, I am too. I, I want him to fight all these guys. I really like him. But I cannot put him ahead of Tiafimo Lopez. I think Tiafimo's counterpunching ability puts him away pretty early. I think Haney is able to outbox him, move around the ring all night long, and, and, and make him miss. You know, the, the, the footwork, the defense, the length. Guys, the best fighters in the world, the pound-for-pound guys. Look at, look at all of the pound-for-pound lists over the last two decades. What is the number one thing that combines all of them? What, what, what is that, 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 that gel that brings all of them? It's defense. Yeah. It's all guys who don't get hit. The guy gets hit too much. And at this weight class, you got guys that are this young, this strong, this powerful, this good, this elite. Can't get hit like that. Beautifully said. Uh, thank you, because I, uh, I needed that, um, because I 100% agree. He is very exciting. And I love the fact that he's willing to stand and trade and give us fans that excitement that we want, that we need as fight fans. But it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable over the course of time. Mm-hmm. And not only that is, I think he gets outboxed by Haney and Tiafimo, like you said. Um, but it's, it's damn fun. Like, I, I enjoy yeah. his his rise. I enjoy him as a player at 140. I, I'm looking forward to his fight that he's got coming up with Liam Paro, uh, June 15th in Puerto That's Rico. That's actually a good matchup. I, really underrated good. matchup. Really underrated good. matchup. Yeah, man. Haney's fighting Ryan April 20th. Tia Fimo's fighting Steve Claggett. Uh, we're going to get into that in just a second. Um, Matias is in action June 15th. So they're all pretty much active within the next couple of months. Cruz is obviously just coming off of a win. And I think Cruz will look for Javante Davis, who also we could add to this, not officially. You know, guys like Javante Davis potentially Friday got 140. Uh, Shakur Stevenson can move up to 140. There's a good bunch of guys at 135 that can join the mix because as we know, you, you follow the money when it comes to boxing in all you can in all sorts of ways. You follow the money. Uh, if the money's in one weight class, you're going to find a, a lot of fighters gravitating to that. That's pretty much why there's no one at 160 right now, because there's no money at 160. There's no one at 147, because Crawford and Spence are, are about to leave. Some of the other players in this loaded division, uh, I don't want to say other guys, because that comes off as derogatory, but it's a mix. It's mostly... Veterans. It's mostly guys, former champions. It's mostly guys that can give these young guns and maybe give these champs a run for the money. It's the J.C. Ramirez's of the world, Jack Catterall, 
Uh, you got Barbosa in there who's fighting on April 20th. You got Richardson Hitchens who's young and in action this weekend. Uh, you got Regis Progre, of course, former champion, but coming off of an absolute dud. And then Ryan Garcia, who you have as 10th here. So how would you sum up like the rest of the division? It's a pretty deep division. Those are all household names for boxing fans. Yeah, I think it's old men and young guys. You know, guys who've been there, guys who haven't been there. Guys who haven't been there, guys who want to be there. JC Ramirez is a guy who gets left off everybody's list. And I keep I keep trying to bring him up. Um, Olympian. Did you see who he's fighting? I did not. Who is he fighting? It's Please. Not, he's, not, he's not fighting. Delorme's fighting Virgil Ortiz. He's fighting. Uh, just keep going. I got to look it up. Keep talking yeah, about yeah. JC Ramirez. Learn, learn Dan. Uh, JC Ramirez, um, he was a guy who's at the top of this division looking, vying for those top fights. Um, and you know, his only loss is to Josh Taylor and it was an awesome fight. It was, it was, it was a close fight. He got dropped twice and was, it was still kept it close. Um, he's a workman. He's a machine. He comes forward. He's very, very technical. He's physically strong. He's huge for the weight class. Um, he, he dismantled Richard Comey. who's always a dangerous guy, um, in, in not too distant memory. So I think he's a guy that is still dangerous, but I think he's m- moved into that role of being the former champ who's going to give a lot of these up-and-comers uh, a stiff test, maybe beat some of them, someone knocks some of them off. I don't necessarily see him being a world champion again at this yeah. weight class because it's just too deep. A different weight class, sure. Uh, Jack Catterall, awesome boxer, man. Like he, He's very, very underrated. Um, he looked great against Josh Taylor. Didn't look so great against Linares, but he's, he made it look easy, basically. Um, and I think he can do that. He's one of those guys. He might not be the most exciting guy. He's not going to be the guy you're going to write home about, but he can fight and he can win some mm-hmm. of these fights. Richardson Hitchens is a big, big question mark to be answered this weekend. Right. Um, I think with a dominant win here, which he does need to dominate, he can't just get by. He can't just squeak by this guy where he's at right now. He's almost in knockout territory like Shakur is. Yeah, but he's not the talent level of Shakur. He's, he's also he's never really got that boring label on him. Yeah, he's not a world I mean. champion yet, and he may never be. So th- it's important for him to, to put on, uh, really put on in that fight. I could see him with a win here, especially if it's, somewhat impressive getting the Matias fight right away and and yeah he's it's, it's an IBF eliminator and yeah it makes it makes it makes total aligned. sense both right. with matchroom so that fight right. makes a lot of sense I don't think we're going to see pro gray at a high level ever again um and and Ryan really I I kind of put him at number 10 as a favor just because you know he's in <laughs> he's, I, don't, I don't really know if he can beat a lot of these guys or any of these guys at 140 he's, a, he's um, the wild card yeah. he's a wild card I think I think a, a, a him and um and Roly Romero fight is going to be in the, in the near future, uh, which is basically going to be a step up from a YouTube fight. How about loser goes to Misfits for that fight? I think loser should just go to YouTube and just stay there. Yeah, Misfits, yeah, YouTube boxers. Um, Jose Ramirez is fighting Rancis Bartholomew. Oh, okay. So it's, it's where it's, the hell did they it's find like him? The, uh, well, it's like the AARP of boxing, that fight. Bro, it's, and, Virgil Ortiz is, <laughs> and Virgil Ortiz is fighting Thomas Delorme. It's the Oof. strangest doubleheader ever. Well, no. like, so the, the Delorme-Virgil Ortiz fight, that is – because Virgil – I mean, sorry, excuse me. Delorme has always been the bridesmaid, never the bride, right? right. That, that's his role. His role to get starched by Terrence Crawford, to get starched by Jerron Ennis, to get <laughs> starched by Virgil Ortiz, like that's yeah. they're, they're they're basically just going like, oh, Jerron did this to him, so all right, Virgil, yeah. what are you, what are you going to do to him? Serve him up. Yep. Yeah, I, that that doubleheader is getting really really criticized, and I get it. Jose Ramirez has made some questionable moves, turning down title fights. So that's uh, a Golden turning, Boy card. Yeah, tu- yeah, he's yeah turning down title fights, turning down uh, big time opportunities over the last eighteen months. For Virgil, I can somewhat give him a pass because of the health issues. It's just good to see him back. It's good to see him go through a um, go through another. I don't hate camp. that fight. I don't hate that fight. It's it's a lot more tolerable than than Delorme uh, than Delorme versus uh, excuse me Bartholomew versus Jose Ramirez. Like I get Virgil uh, never not, in a good fight. He he hasn't worked in a good fight when he was in his physical prime. Right, like, he's in the worst fight of all time, the lowest punched count of all time against Robert, Robert Easter. I was gonna say Robert Easter, yeah. Robert Easter versus Francis Bartholomew is one of the worst fights to last 100 years. Like, they've landed the least <laughs> amount of punches. I'm, like, hey, I'm not even kidding. Like, you could, that's, that's not even an opinion. That's Dan's like, no, don't laugh. This is, this is accurate. This is, this is. It's like the barometer. Data. It's the barometer for shit fights. Like, it's, that's, wow. the, that's the bottom bar. And then it's everything above it. Because they, you know, it was even, it's, I think, Progray versus Zaria was better than that one in terms of punches landed. Well, we just, um, had, we just had Omar Juarez on Pro Box card, and he got stopped. And he had a draw with with Rancis in I think his last fight. Just, uh, I, I don't know. I, I give I like Virgil Ortiz. I'm willing to give him a little bit of a pass here. He's also in line 
to fight for a title at 154 in the very near future. Get him in there, stay healthy, go through a training camp, you know, knock him out, boom, boom, boom. Jose Ramirez, I, I don't get that. But, yeah, that rounds out the 140-pound division. It's the best division in boxing. It's the deepest division. It's got, you know, stars. It's got bit players. It's got great champions. It's got exciting champions, new champions. It's got it all. Love that division. Hopefully, oh, wait. they all fight each other. I, he did not get stopped. I'm sorry. I was I – was, I'm thinking of the wrong fight. Good. Self-correct, Chris, because the comment yeah, I, section lately has been hey, on our ass. As you should. You, you have to be – you should be on our ass. That, that, this, is, <laughs> this is their job. I'm sorry. He beat Clarence Booth his last fight. He actually looked oh, really, really good. Actually, never mind. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where that came from. That was – that was a absolute brain fart. But he Listen, did fight – he did fight um, – he looked really good in that fight, actually. So I take that back. Omar, I'm sorry, brother. You did a great job that night. <laughs> That was uh, that was my bad. I'm not sure where that came from. So, listeners, make sure you <laughs> we, we we could probably cut that. <laughs> no, we're good. Well, it's it's fine, man. We're on the we're flowing, baby. It's we, nice. we make mistakes and we correct them. And I'll be in the comment section responding to everyone. There's a lot of love in there, and there's also a lot of people that want to keep us honest. And you know, it's it's a lot of going on in boxing. It's a lot to keep up with, and we do a pretty damn good job of it. I'm gonna stick up for my. My co-host here. Um, let's get into uh, Tiafimo Lopez. He's a guy at 140, yeah. and he has a new opponent. We weren't able to talk about this on our last episode, uh, but on June 29th, Tiafimo Lopez will be fighting Canadian Steve Claget. Uh, I don't know where they found this guy. I don't know where this came from. It's going to be in Miami, Florida. Of course, Tiafimo last fought in February versus Jermaine Ortiz. Less than stellar performance. Some boo birds came out, and we learned one thing, or we solidified one thing is that Tiafimo needs a come forward fighter to really shine. Steve Claggett is that. Yeah. He has won nine straight fights since losing to fellow Canadian Matthew Germain in May of 2021. He gets hit more than he lands, Chris. He throws in the high 70s. He's a Canadian brawler that's wow. going to stand in the middle of the ring and take punishment from Tiafimo Lopez. I don't know exactly what this does, Tiafimo, besides give him a little bit of a confidence boost and a knockout, but this is going to be a knockout win for Tiafimo. I mean, is it though? Because apparently with Tiafimo, if if he doesn't feel threatened, he doesn't really show up. And he okay. is he is he is the king of underwhelming plus overwhelming performances. He's either fantastic or he's a dud. So um, I don't know. Is he going to be up for this to make this fight or you know a showcase the way that? Listen, there's always those guys, right? There's the guys who do what they're supposed to do with the guys that are in front of them. And mm -hmm. then there's the guys who kind of struggle, but they can beat the best guys. I was actually like that. I was always good at fighting the best fight, the best guys, and I was good at fighting the, the fights that I was supposed to lose. But a lot of times on the way up, I kind of struggled with some of the guys that people were like, well, you should really be smoking this guy. Um, and Tio kind of has has a bit of that, or has, actually definitely has a lot of that. Um, but the Claggett, though, he's been around for a long time. I think he's 34 years old, too. He's been on a tear lately. Uh, a lot of very well-matched opponents. Tiafimo is not a well-matched opponent for him. Like you said, he's, it's actually the opposite. So he's getting his shot. And uh, yeah, I mean, this this looks to be a setup showcase fight for, for Tiafimo Lopez. Let's see if he can pull the trigger and actually do that. Yeah, he's got a bunch. I think he just re-signed with Top Rank. I think he's locked in for a multi-fight multi deal with, with Top that Rank. And, and yeah, this isn't like, you know, his last fight on the deal like it is with Shakur, who we're going to talk about next. Like, I just, I, I'm, I just want to get rid of that notion with, with Tiafimo. And I just don't think it's ever going to go away for his career. It's like, he can only get up for the biggest fights. It's, you know, when it's Tiafimo fight week, that's the main thing we talk about uh, is that whole thing he's got going on in his career right now, where he has to, has to be threatened and it has to be a big time fight. And he has to create this turmoil in his personal life. That's just not sustainable. You know, we're talking about sustainable things like defense and a jab which Tiafimo has, but the other at things of, of boxing, the other uh, mental as side of it, which you can argue is just as important as the physical. It's just a strange, strange thing. So I would, I would like to see for the sake of boxing, uh, Tiafimo get in there, put off, put up virtuoso performance, get this guy out of there and then get into some of these big fights that we were just talking about. Unifications with Matias, unifications with Haney, uh, Haney. Uh, you know, he's talked about going up to 147 and, and doing something there. Just make, giving us the big fights and, and, you know, create those moments then. You know, create those big fights in that in that environment that you really need, Tiafimo. Yeah, I, I, honestly, he doesn't need to be virtuoso for this opponent. He needs to go out there and just get a knockout. It doesn't right. matter where it comes, how it comes. Um, and honestly, even if he struggles a little bit with this guy, it's probably better for him. It might get him, might, might be able to make those fights a little easier um, to get and cheaper for the promoters. 
Um, Won't be good for his public image, man, because it's not great right now. No, no, it's not. But uh, listen, we we said that about Cruz, right? It's what have you done for me lately? You can be in the depths of hell and then you you can be on top of the world. You know, you can be a king in heaven right away uh, with one big win. So, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for for, for Tifimo in that fight. But, you know, listen, he's he's got to do what he does. I think he will. I think think stylistically, you know, when I'm looking at X's and O's, I don't know how Claggett would really give him any trouble. Um, uh, but if, if Tio's dialed in, he's, he can beat anybody in the world anytime. Yeah. Uh, so that's June 29th in Miami, uh, where that's a place that Tio you know, always wanted to fight. You know, I remember he was like, I'm going to fight Cambosos in Miami. At the we have a venue Orange for that? Bowl. I don't know. Uh, it's, I'm, gonna, it's a top I'm, I'm thing. going to that. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a short drive for me. I'm going. Yeah, maybe you'll get on the call. Maybe you'll be on the call for that. Yeah, true. Possibly. With the top ranked team. Yeah, so that's the latest with Tia Fimo. Over to another fighter that really needs a big time performance or really needs a stoppage. That's Shakur Stevenson. He's fighting Artem Hartinian on July 6th. Uh, Hartinian, if that sounds familiar to you, he's best known for taking Frank Martin to the limit yeah. last July. It was actually an even fight towards the last round. If if Artem had won the final round, he would have got a draw in that fight. Instead, he was knocked down yeah, by Frank Martin. Down. Yeah, so um, I watched the tape on Hartinium. Uh, I watched that, rewatched that fight with Frank. He's going to stand and trade. Uh, yes. He doesn't have huge power. He throws around 50 punches around, so it's nothing astronomical, but he will be in range for Shakur Stevenson. That's something I saw in the fight with, with Frank, is that he was willing to stand and trade despite not having a lot of power. This is another case of a top ranked fighter that needs a knockout. It's another case of a guy that's at a career crossroads, which is insanity. Uh, because he's so damn talented, but he's got to really get a knockout in this fight for Shakur. I don't see a knockout. I don't no. see it. Artem, not not a puncher, but he's strong. He's well, physically well, if, strong. If he doesn't get a knockout, then he's got to he's got to do a Shakur Stevenson dominant. He's, he's going to dominate, and there's going to be opportunity. I think he's I think he's going to he's going to be able to, um, especially in the mid to late rounds, really tune Artem up. Um, but Artem is, is is he's strong. He's durable. Um, listen, Frank Martin. Granted, he's not. He's not on the level of Shakur in my eyes um, in terms of his technical skill, but he is a very physical guy, and he throws mm-hmm. punches. He lets his, his hands go. He breaks guys down. He's really good at that. He's really physical. Um, he's the kind of guy he wants you to take you to the limit. And he meant, you know, he, just, he basically just met the same kind of guy. Um, uh, but still won the fight. Still absolutely won the fight. It wasn't like it was a, it was a, a robbery or anything, but... Struggled a little bit. Struggled, for sure, for sure. You need fights like that. It's early in his career. I mean, he's, he's still a young guy. And, um, but Artem, I think he showed a lot in that fight that he is, he can take and he's tough and he's going to drive, you know, if, if, if he comes in shape and he comes in with that same kind of effort, uh, I see this going the distance. I, I think Shakur is going to be able to completely outclass him for sure. And he's going to find a lot of holes, uh, in the aggression and he's going to make him miss a lot wildly. Um, I don't know. I, I think, I think we see round 12 though. Okay. If it goes the distance and it's in Shakur gets another decision win. But during those 12 rounds, during those 36 minutes, I want to see Shakur stand in the middle of the ring. I want to see him trade. I want to see him take risks. I want to see him throw combinations and not really care about what's coming back. He said he's going to turn it all the way up in this fight. I don't still don't know what that means. We need to see it's something different. We need to see a different wrinkle from him offensively because of the criticism that he's facing, which is just, in my opinion, and the fact that this is his last fight. With top rank, he's at a career crossroads. He can't just stand in there and move around and you know land his forty five percent power and and not get hit. I think he needs to change it up a little bit. Do you agree? I'm not saying I agree or disagree. I just don't see it. I I, I know. <laughs> I don't see it. I just I, I don't I, I think I think one of those one of those winging shots from Artem clips clips Shakur partially on the glove and partially behind his ear, and he goes, "Yeah, this guy's too strong. I'm just going to make him. I'm going to box his ears off." And he does that. I mean, he's gonna go back to his instincts, right? Yeah, of course. It's a, it's dude. It's not. It's a, it's a, it's a personality trait. A lot of times, fighters fight as an expression of who they are as a person, what they are inside of them. And I think Shakur is one of those guys. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be smart about this. I don't need to, I don't need to trade with you, bro. It's the only way you can, you can beat me. So, um, I think he's gonna do, do what, what he does best. Um, and he's gonna box smart. All right, that's uh, July sixth at in Newark. For Shakur Stevenson. Let's talk about some weekend fights. Let's quickly go through this. Uh, not much to choose from. Matchroom has a card in Las Vegas at the Fountain Blue, which I uh, was just at last weekend. Cavernous Hotel, man. I heard they're losing a shit ton of money, bro. It's huge in there, and there's nothing in it. 
it's it's bizarre. Reminds me of remember um, the Ocean Resort in oh, in, AC? In, uh, in AC, yeah. Well, it's was, now called the Ocean, but before Re- that it was called it was Rebel. Rebel. Then. It was and relevant. I was like, dude, this place is like too big. It's too nice for Atlantic City. And they quickly like went bankrupt. Like anyway, uh, Fountain Blue is is massive. It's really beautiful. But uh, that's where the fights will be this weekend uh, for Matchroom. Richardson Hitchens is the main event. Just talked about him at 140. He's fighting Gustavo Limos, who has been the IBF mandatory for a quite a while now. He's an Argentinian, just like you, Chris. Uh, he's never left Argentina to fight. He's got his work cut out for him because... You can call Richardson Hitchens boring, but man, is he technical and man, can he control a fight with his jab? Yeah, super sharp, um, tall, long for the weight class, uh, uses his size really well. Great gas tank, really slows the pace of the fight, so he doesn't really have to really push that endurance all that much. Um, the, the real knock on him for people who are really paying attention is that there's opportunities for him to go for knockouts and he doesn't. Mm. And he's admittedly said that. You know, uh, I think he said that in the, um, who was the Puerto Rican guy that he fought? couple fights ago not Cepeda um, no no it's said Chon Chon is Mexican but it's the same thing he said it after the Chon fight too there was opportunities for him in the late rounds where he could really step on the gas and probably got Chon out of there um and we saw in Chon's next fight there really wasn't much left of him anyway John Bowser Bowser exactly yeah the Puerto Rican Bowser um mm-hmm. in that fight he dropped the kid twice he was cracking him with big right hands um but never really stepped on the gas never really got behind the work that he was building uh, to build on and, and put some real hurt on the guy. It's not really the kind of style that he is, but you got this Argentinian guy, shorter guy coming up, smaller guy. Mm. Um, obviously you can punch. So he's going to be putting the pressure, but man, getting past that jab is, is not an easy task. So yeah. let's see if he can, he can press, uh, put enough pressure on Hitchinson to make him uncomfortable and forces him to fight. And then we'll see what he's really got. Yeah, Lemos throws 80 punches around. He's got a motor on him, a lot of body work. Expect that. He throws Never 80 thought... punches around when he gets within distance and position. Let's yeah, see exactly. That. That's one of my favorite things to watch when I, I obviously love the stats. When I see a guy that throws 80 and then they're in there with someone with a really good jab, or they're they in there with someone five. with a lot of power and it plummets to like 40 thrown around. Uh, but he got a lot of body shots from Lemos. Uh, Never fought anyone close to. He's Hitchens. short, right? Lemos? Short guy. Short guy, yep. And and we talk about Hitchens. Fifty percent of his thrown punches are jabs. So you know he goes he goes heavy with the jab, and he also lands eight of them per round. It's a very beautiful style of of in and out and 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 uh, the sweet science. It's just and he's gotten to the point where you know he was cut by PBC. He's picked up by Matchroom. Uh, he's at that point where he's at a title eliminator. If he wins this, he's the mandatory for Richardson Hitchens. Excuse me for Subriel Matias. Uh, so it's like put up or shut up time in terms of entertaining and taking chances, going for knockouts, because those matter. Speaking of knockouts, one guy that we know will get one this weekend, I think at least, is Diego Pacheco, our guy, uh, the best young fighter in boxing, arguably, fighting another uh, kind of, I wouldn't say walkover, but he is, Sean McCallum. Um, don't know much about Sean. Do know a lot about Diego Pacheco. I expect another knockout inside of seven or eight rounds, and then we can continue to praise Pacheco, but I also want to see Pacheco against a live body. And I, I want to see know. him. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you know I about called, Sean that I, I don't? Well, Sean before Sean okay. can fight. This is Sean why, is, this is why you're here, Chris. Sean I just is over. smart. Sean is a smart athletic guy. So take the um, over. What's that? Take the over then. What is the over? Let me look it up. Keep going on Sean. Uh, yeah. Sean, Sean's good, man. Sean, Sean is a, a smart guy. Um, he's a good athlete. He's big for the weight class. If if he can slow the pace for Pacheco, which I'm not saying he can, if he can slow the pace, he mm. can make that fight a little bit interesting and definitely last some rounds. So, with well, I would love to over, see that. I would love to see on, the, on this over. I would love to um, see Pacheco pushed. I would love to see Pacheco in a little bit of trouble because we I haven't th- really. I seen think that. I, I think everyone, uh, everyone, all of our listeners know that I'm a huge Diego Pacheco fan. Not only as seven a and a half is the over under. Honestly, I could see it. I could see it. I could see the over. Could you see Pacheco by decision? Um, Plus I would be surprised, but it's not it's not out of the realm of possibility. No. So late late stoppage. I think I think I think nine eight nine round eight nine ten. Oh, rounds. Pacheco by stoppage seven through twelve. Plus one sixty. That's tasty. Yeah, 
I, I'm playing that. that. I'm going to put, put a parlay together and put it on social media. We I will have that. some type of parlay deal soon. I'm putting that into the universe. Uh, I'm talking to some sports books right now, you know, Ooh. making some deals now. Now that I'm out on my own deals, and I'm deals, uh, deals. I'm uh, no longer with John Boy Media, I'm making making deals. Um, Scott Nicholson is in action against Sarah Muf- Mafad. Mafood? Um, Mafood? Yeah, she's, uh, she's been with everybody. Yeah, she. That's the thing with this, the the women's boxing is if your name and your and your and you're reputable and you can you can fight, you're gonna get a lot of opportunities. For Sky, it's a world title fight. She's fighting for the vacant title that Amanda Serrano gave up, the WBC belt. Nicholson has been calling out Serrano left and right. She thinks she could beat Amanda Serrano. You gotta have that mentality if you're a fighter. I say it, all you fighters are delusional a little bit. You have to be delusional, right? Definitely. Absolutely have to be that way. Um, but also, I mean, with um, Serrano, man, she's getting older every day. We all she's are. getting older and she's coming. She's not going to be that. out anymore. She's uh, I yeah. think I think Serrano Nicholson is a is a fun, marketable fight. I, I, I know that Serrano's team isn't really entertaining it. You know, I work pretty closely with them at MVP. And, you know, they're kind of looking for the biggest of the big, right? They're, they're filling up stadiums in Puerto Rico. Obviously, she didn't fight in that fight because of the eye injury. Uh, they're looking at, you know, a Chantel Cameron. They're looking at a rematch with Katie Taylor. They're looking at maybe Alicia, uh, Alicia Bumgardner, who I saw at the top ranked gym, who's been cleared of all of her problems. But, you know, Nick, Nicholson's a name. I mean, she's all over social media. I mean, we know why. And she's winning fights. She doesn't have the greatest and most fan-pleasing style. I think she would lose to Serrano. That's but I think over- Serrano, I mean, like that's an overstatement, bud. <laughs> I get that, but like, like or, Serrano, I think I think Serrano Sky Nicholson is like a. It's there's not a lot of huge fights in women's boxing. It's a very serviceable fight, and it makes sense. And it, I think people would watch that. Uh, yeah, for sure. And the buildup would be would be the 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 biggest part of of that whole fight. Um, but I, I don't know, Serrano Eddie versus really Jake cool. again. Serrano's been making money lately. I don't know. If oh, that she's printing money, bro. Yeah. I, I was out in Puerto Rico last month for her fight. I mean, she's a freaking hero there. She's up there with some. As of she the, should be. I As get that. Be. Absolutely, she's up there with like the legends of boxing. And, I mean, she's up there with some of the legends athletes. You know, like uh, you know, not up there. With, obviously, Roberto Clemente, but you know, some of the the historic Puerto Rican professional athletes. She's in that discussion, and that's the type of way that she's been thinking and type of way she's been moving. I wouldn't be shocked to see her on that Mike Tyson, Jake Paul undercard on July 20th, especially mm-hmm. as she got cleared because of her eye uh, with that whole fiasco, which was one of the most bizarre and saddest things I have ever experienced. Yeah, well, you saw it firsthand. So. It was nuts, man. I was on the call and I was like, you know, we're texting with the truck and, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out the fight's going to happen. And, you know, I'm thinking it's going to be a freaking riot. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I'm getting my shit and running out of here. But luckily they uh, announced that that refund. Um, but yeah, that's the weekend of fights. Uh, it's not the biggest fight weekend. I will tune in occasionally in between watching my Yanks, who are six and one. Whoa, dude, the Yanks are hot. Yo, Chris, the Whoa. Yanks are back. The Yanks, we're going to the Yankee game this summer. Yeah, hell yeah. We'll get we Ronnie. Do Remember we do our friend Ronnie? Live episode. <laughs> if we get noticed at Yankee Stadium for our podcast, that would be the highlight of my life because I did get noticed at Yankee Stadium last year because of my John Boy warehouse stuff. Mm, and I was with okay. my brother, and a couple guys asked me for a selfie, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I got you, bro." Took a selfie. My brother was like, "Wait a second. He's like, is that fucking thing now?" He's like, "I'm not going out with you if you're taking selfies." <laughs> you, dude, you actually just did a really good impression to your brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like, "No." He's like, "Your head is already big enough. I'm not doing this. Like, this ain't gonna be a thing." But yes, we're oh, going for to our the- listeners. Dan's head's bigger than mine, for the record. For no, the record, no way. Yeah, dude. No way. Uh, we're in public. Forget it, man. He, Ego he, off. You win. Soaks it up. Soaks <laughs> it up. This guy. Hey, listen, man. I, I don't. I'm not a former pro champion. I'm not a guy that was on CSI. <laughs> whatever. All your accolades. Playing a dead person on CSI. Whatever you did uh, it, during your your. Uh, I played Johnny days. Amato. Johnny Amato. He was. Oh, we gotta uh, pull that up. That's it's it's good, man. It was I remember good. seeing that. Like I I wasn't like as close as we are now. We didn't do a show, but like we were friends, like through through yeah. boxing. And I was like, I remember he posted it on something. I'm like, this motherfucker is is on CSI. I was like, tell me he's gonna be an actor now, which I could totally see. I was like, who does this guy <laughs> think he is playing a dead man? 
I missed I missed my opportunity. I should have I should have I should have cut out early and just went the, the acting right. Route. Should but now we're we're doing talking boxing twice a week for this is this is things. actually way better. This is a lot more fun. Yeah, Hollywood's weird. Hollywood's weird. Brian Garcia says Hollywood's weird. I, I kind of I, I see where he's him. coming from. Listen, th- th- he says some crazy things, but I think he's probably spot on about uh, some of that stuff. <laughs> oh boy, what a what a world we're living in. Uh, thank you everyone for joining this episode. Um, enjoying doing these two weeks. We'll be back on Monday, maybe. Yes, we will be back Monday. Monday. Wrapping up the weekend, talking about whatever. Who knows at this point? Protect yourselves at all times. Keep your hands up at all times. If you have Yankee tickets for me and Chris, send us a DM. 